bless you. What a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Been serving the Lord a mighty long time, Mother Paul. But there ain't nobody like Jesus. Nobody like the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Seeking the Lord when Bishop sent word one me to speak. And like Bishop, we go to the Holy Ghost. Lord, show us. And I said to Bishop this morning, I said, now Bishop, I'm upset with you. I said, you don't preach the word the Lord gave me to preach. <laughs> How many of you preachers know what I'm talking about? Come on. But what it said to me, God is working in a mighty way in this church. God is getting ready to move like we've never, and I know many of you have been in the ministry, you've been knowing the Lord a long time, but you better listen to me tonight. God's getting ready to do things you've never seen before. Right. He's getting ready to turn your house inside out, upside down, and every which way. Sometimes us preachers get to thinking we got it figured out. Huh? But the longer I've served him, the more I know. You can't figure out the Lord. He's got ways we don't know about. God can do things we never seen before. Hallelujah. But God told me to tell y'all. Amen. I want you to stand up again, y'all too. Hallelujah. This is the standingest church I've ever been in. Hallelujah. <laughs> By the time you sit down, stand up. But God told me to tell you, y'all got a new address. I said, you have a new address. Word of the Lord said in Colossians, God has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness, the power of darkness, into the kingdom of his dear son. Now I want you to get somebody, look them in the eye, and say, I got a new address. preaching after bed. <laughs> That's Walter, I got a new address. Some people this morning didn't get the new address. I know where y'all live, but I live on 7 Jesus Christ Way in heaven and places in the kingdom of God. Salem. Ah! You've been translated. You don't live where you think you live. Word of the Lord said, if you're going to live in the Spirit, you better walk in the Spirit. Get out there, 
Jack shakes up at his hand and says, I'm getting ready to travel.
Coming to church three times a week. No, I'm telling you, it's sad. But what's going to happen, I'm telling you, God's getting ready to shake your basket. You think things going on in America like you've been seeing it going on? Let me tell you, God's getting ready to fall. This nation is going to shake. It's going to rock and roll. And you better know that the church will be filled then, Pastor. Hallelujah. But God don't want you to wait. Come in now. Come in now. Come in now. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is calling you. Come in now. Come in now into God's love. Lift your hand up and say, Lord, I need greater love. I need the Holy Ghost. Impart your love. I need your love, Lord. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna, amen. I'm going to give you some examples. When you just said that, you asking God, amen, to deal with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know why? We're not seeing the miracle power like we ought to see. God said, because I can't trust them. Because they're going to get lifted up. Hallelujah. But God don't want anybody lifted up but Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus. He's the healer. Jesus. He's the one that works the miracles. Hallelujah. Going along. God took me on up in heaven. And you know what I saw? I saw this huge, immense building. Couldn't even see the top of it. And as I, as I approached that building, the doors opened. It was translucent, full of light. And as I approached that building, and the Spirit of God said, go in. And I obeyed. And as the doors opened, I came into a great hall. And I saw doors. And I said, Lord, what door do I go through? How many know who the door is? You're not going anywhere in God's kingdom except you go through Jesus. Hallelujah. And the door opened. And the Holy Spirit said, enter in. And I went on in. And what I saw were cages. As high as I couldn't even see. Cage after cage. Hallelujah. Cage upon cage. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, it's where my people are dwelling. It's where my people are living. They think they're free, but they're yet caged. Hallelujah. And I said, oh, Jesus. And he said, go and open. And I went over and opened the cage, Bishop. Here was a little lamb, almost lifeless. And I picked up that little lamb. And I walked over carrying that little lamb. And I carried that little lamb to Jesus. And I said, Lord, and this is dealing with spiritual pride right now. I told my son, I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I thought I knew what to do, but I don't know what to do. And I loved on that little lamb. Yes, sir. And I began to weep and to cry. And I said, Lord Jesus, restore life in this little lamb. God's people, hallelujah, are hanging on by a thread. They think they're walking in, but they're just barely hanging on. Oh, This ministers get lifted up in pride and think they're all right. Hallelujah. But God told me tonight I'm going to set an example. That little lamb. I began to pray. And I came to this place. Preachers, listen to me. And I said, in heaven, I said, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. You know how to raise this little lamb. 
And I saw a hand. I never saw Jesus' face, but I knew it was him. And while I was holding that little lamb and I was crying, his hand reached out and touched that little lamb. And he came in full strength. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. God is going to take you ministers to a place that you're going to perceive beyond what you have. And you're going to see, God's going to let you see in the heart of his people. And he's going to let you know with a word of wisdom and word of knowledge what you need to speak and what you need to do. And God, hallelujah, is going to do it in a far greater measure than what you have experienced. In But in Africa, and I was praying, and the assistants said, there are over 700 in the prayer line. And everyone wants you to pray for them. Some of you preachers better say, God, give me some strength. Come on. We handle 30 or 40 and we, we're about bored or frazzle. Huh? But God is bringing them in, brother. God will bring people in. This place is going to be packed out as sure as I'm standing here. Amen. Don't even have to prophesy. It's just going to happen. I said Hallelujah. it's going to happen. Hallelujah. But God needs some ministers. Hallelujah. That will be able to discern what's going on in people. What's happening in them. And then they'll come on out. But guess what? You're a minister. I want you to poke yourself right in your chest. I am a minister. I am a minister. You may not be a pastor, evangelist, apostle, but you're a minister. Yes. And everywhere you go, you are the light in darkness. Everywhere you go, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost should be walking with you. You should be walking in the Spirit everywhere you go. Hallelujah, when your neighbor is hurting, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost coming on you and say, pray for him. Give him a word in the street. Give them a word in the marketplace. Give them a word, hallelujah, where you are on the job at school. God's calling you. Say, I am a minister of the Most High God. If the Holy Ghost is in you, hallelujah. Come on. Did y'all think you could do it all? It's going to take all of us. Somebody say, all of us. It's going to take all of us. In any way, praying there. And Bishop, they called me and said, we want you to come preach in another place. I said, all right. Bishop, I started to walk up. Thousands upon thousands. They said there's over 10,000 people. And they had an altar, Bishop, and, 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 and a, a, a pulpit raised up. Must have been 20 feet or more up there. And they said, Pastor, get up there and preach. And I climbed up there and I began to preach to the multitude. God started healing people, not because of me, because with boldness we preach this glorious gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There's some of y'all asleep in your spirit, so it don't matter to me. But I know God's going to shake your tree. You can put that down. He's going to do it. Hallelujah. People holding on and God saying, let go. People letting go and God saying, hold on. You better find out what the will of the Lord is for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greater love. Greater love. Greater love has no man. Except he that lays his slave life down. God's calling you, church. So you think you're going to get away from this word tonight? I'm not here just talking. Whether you know it or not. 
You're going to be held accountable from this night forward. For it's dangerous to come into the hands of the living God. You come to the house of the Lord, you better not be playing church. When the word of the Lord goes forth, it is his word, his anointed word, through a vessel, you are accountable. Prophet Nathan said to David, essentially, I'm the prophet of the Lord. You can build God's house. God's been with you. God's blessed you. God's favored you. God is with you. And you can build a house of the Lord. The prophet Nathan said, guess what? God got a hold of the prophet Nathan and turned him around. And he had to go back to King David and say, Thus saith the Lord, you cannot build my house. Did y'all hear me? You better know the Lord for yourself. You better know the voice of the Lord. You had better get in the Bible studies on Thursday night and get the word of God in you. They're all nice about it. See, because I'm not bishop, I don't have to be nice. I can be, amen, truthful and speak with boldness. That's going to get you all upset. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, he's called pastor, and he's got to treat you gentle. I don't have to. I may know your Lord did. He did that. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to be held accountable. Everybody in this church, there's no reason for this crowd to be down on Sunday night. Amen. I was in a church where the Holy Ghost moving like this church, like he moved this morning, and heard a word, Bishop, amen, you preach a word that very few preachers I've heard preach. Come on, give him, amen, a hand of appreciation. That's not trying to cut him up. It's real. It's true. Y'all don't really know what you got here. Right? My friend and I looked for 32 churches in this area, and guess where we ended up? In the sea of faith. Because the Holy Ghost is moving here. The power of God is here. The real is here. No reason this should be packed out. I'm telling you. You're right. Say that. God's going to start lighting some fires. Yes, he is. He's going to shake the trees. Hallelujah. Ain't no reason Thursday night Bible. Amen. Just a handful come. What do you think is going to keep you in the days ahead? If you keep my commandments, then my love will abide in you. What's his commandments? Love God with part of your heart. Part of your time. Huh? Just a little bit of your strength. Huh? What's, and how many know what a commandment is? It's not a request. God's not pleading and begging you and requesting from you. God commanded you. Love me with all your heart. I know what's going on. TV. When I started in Pentecost, we went just about every night to church. Every night, Mother Clark and I talked about it. What's going on now? We've got to be entertained. Hello. God's getting ready to fix it. Some going to get in and some going to get out. But where did you find in the commandment that you can love God just a little bit? They're not there. And you think you live in your life and staying at home because you just you're a little uncomfortable and 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 and, and I got a little tummy ache and and, and 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 my favorite TV program's on and and I was in church this morning and and and. and Excuses. Come on. 
Y'all don't understand what's coming. I know you don't. You better get hold. You better take hold. You better take hold. How tough Hallelujah. When them doors are open, some of you are faithful. I know that. God knows that. But God's calling the whole church, not just Amen. the Amen. Come on, he's calling the whole church. Say it again. How are we going to see our loved ones really saved and filled with the Holy Ghost if we just part way with God? Just part way. Yet we're living that way. We're not walking in the Spirit. We're playing church. We're playing what makes us feel good. You know a lot of people come to church because it makes them feel good. Huh? It's the thing to do. Mom and Daddy want me to come. Grandma wants me to come. Huh? Hallelujah. And preachers come. Amen, because that's what's expected. But we lose sight of the fire, of the burning, of the Holy Ghost. Begin to burn in us, Lord. Let your fire burn. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to, God told me to do something tonight. Right along with what Bishop said, but I want to admonish you. There's many ways the Holy Ghost ministers to people. Many ways. God told me there was three people here tonight. Now, this was three days ago. I had no bishop. You didn't call me and tell me what you was preaching. You didn't know what I was preaching. But God said there were three people here tonight. Amen. That they, that call this morning. There's something in their heart they haven't been able to let go of. They pushed it down. They suppressed it. They tried to plead the blood. They tried to fat. They tried to pray. They tried to do everything. But it's there. Hold it on. Hold it on. God said there's three people. God told me that I was to wash their feet. If you'll obey and the Holy Ghost is going to speak to you. There's three of you that God is going to give you a great victory tonight. Ain't you doing just obey. Sometimes the Holy Ghost does a thing just because you obey. Yeah. Amen. You may not even have faith in your heart. Huh? Amen. I don't have time to diverse. But you just got to obey. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You just got to obey. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask if they'll come. Can I ask y'all to sit in the audience? We're going to need three of these chairs. Amen. Can I get a couple help to help me? Praise the Lord. We're going to set this to the side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop. Now, I'm going to set them up here because I'm on pushing 67. Not easy for to get me to get down on my knees. But, beloved, Jesus loves you more than you realize. But God is not going to be mocked. Amen. Jesus died for you. Gave his all. I mean, think he just gave a part. Or a little bit. Gave his all. What's he asking of you? You're all. You're all. We want to say we love God. Amen. But we don't love our brother that was seen. The word of the Lord said the truth's not in you. Nobody said amen on that. Am I preaching too hard? I can't be preaching that hard. I've heard hard preaching in this church. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to stir something in you. Amen. That you've not witnessed, you've not seen in your own life personally. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost prophesied this morning. Some of you are going to be awakened in the midnight hour. When you're sound asleep. I'm talking about the power of God now. He's going to wake you up. And hallelujah. You're going to feel the Holy Ghost on you. And you're just going to start praising the Lord. Hallelujah. In the early morning hour. Hallelujah. God's bringing you out. God's bringing you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
There's a cloud on some of your minds. I want to address that. Satan, take your hand off the mind. In the Mahashallah. Hallelujah. You don't want to get around a Holy Ghost preachers because they see things. Huh? Y'all know. Hallelujah. Some of y'all got a cloud on you. You're not even hearing. You're not hearing what the Holy Ghost is saying. Hallelujah. Come on. Come all the way with the Lord. Come all the way with the Lord. Come all the way with the Lord. Don't back off. Don't hold back. Come all the way. Yeah, you got through. I heard the testimony. I've been through too. I'll tell you a couple. My dad, and I appreciate it, Bishop, because I hated him too. Used to beat me when I was a kid. In fact, my uncles used to have to pull him off. He was beating me so bad. I hated him. But later on in life, he became a multimillionaire. His products, he had manufacturing. I used to sign, I worked for him, sign the payroll checks. 140 to 160,000 a week. But when it was all said and done, that product sold nationwide in loads. His products were free gifts on Price is Right. I'm trying to tell you where I come from. So when I tell you God requires you to love him with all of your heart, you better let go of this world and love him the things of this world. But I had a brother, he finagled, he got some lawyers, and when my dad passed away, you know what I got from his estate? My brother got millions. He built an estate up here in Camden. I'm trying to tell you where I'm coming from. But after 10 years, I just, I wouldn't speak to him. Now, I'm a Holy Ghost preacher. Gifts of the Holy Ghost were in my life, but I wouldn't talk to him. One day the Holy Ghost came out over me. Jesus said, if I didn't forgive, if I didn't forgive, he wouldn't forgive me. And I couldn't stand that. So after about 10 years, I made a journey. Hallelujah. Brother John, come on up here. And I made a journey to Canby, Oregon. My brother's estate there, by the way, he now it rides in the Olympics. He's one of the world's top horse trainers. But he had a huge ranch there. But after 10 years, I showed up, and I know he didn't know if I had a gun and was going to take him out or what was going to happen. And I drove up to his big custom mansion that he had, past all his servants' quarters. Hallelujah. When I drove up, all I could think was, I love you. And I grabbed my brother. Love him with all your heart. 
with all your heart. With all your heart. Hallelujah, lift both hands. Say, I need your help, Jesus. I need your help, Jesus. I confess, Lord, the love in me is not as great as it should be. Oh, Holy Ghost, shed that love of God abroad in my heart that I may love not only them that hurt me, not only them that misuse me, but even my enemies, Lord. God bless you. I want to close. I said I'm going to give just a couple examples. I can talk all night. What God's done for me. But I had a real enemy. Doing everything they could to destroy. Mother Clark, I had a hard time. Now, when you, you got somebody that rubs you the wrong way, or somebody says something hurts you and offends you, or does something hurt you and offends you, but when you got somebody purposely trying to destroy you, we call that an enemy. They hate you, and they want to destroy you. How many have ever had a real enemy? I know Bishop has. Hallelujah. A real enemy. That's one of the hardest ones to love. I'm going to give you a little example. My prayer garden in my house. I went out one morning and the thief had come in and stole all kind of precious things that I had in my prayer garden. And I had a big sign that says, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate. The sign said, you know, the Lord is coming soon. But they walked right on the end past the signs into my prayer garden and stole all kind of things that was dear to me. I saw that. I was upset. I have been upset when you've been robbed or been things stolen from you. You get upset. I was so upset. I walked on the street from my prayer garden. I was on the street. And it just came out of me. And I hollered, and you could probably heard me three blocks. I hate thieves! She you know, about that time the Holy Ghost spoke and said, Haven't you been a thief? See, <laughs> we get spiritual pride, don't we, real quick. Let me tell you something about spiritual pride. It'll build up really fast. you got to guard against that all the time. Hallelujah. And so the Lord, amen, hallelujah, he delivered me and I repented. And you know what? God brought the thief back to my house, my front porch the next day. Said, I got some really neat things I'd like to sell you. <laughs> and I said, because see, now I had repented, and the love of God was flowing in you. And I knew it was my stuff. Amen. And the thief said, Well, I said, Well, how much do you want for it? And set their price, and I paid the price. Amen. But out in the midst of that, I got to witness to them about Jesus. Hallelujah. Big old tears form in their eye. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you I'm real. God wants us real. And you need to know I'm real. God's going to do a real thing here tonight. Hallelujah. Three people bow your heads. You know the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. You haven't been able. Somebody in your family hurt you. And God told me one person was hurt by the ministry. Deeply hurt. I, I've had some of my worst hurts in the church. And there's somebody else you haven't been able to forgive your spouse. Hallelujah. If he, brother, come on, get your shoes and socks off, and get your chair. Hallelujah. There's two more. The other one God said is about your spouse. 
did you dirty? Did you terrible? They're not with you no more. But amen, there's, there's an unforgiveness thing. Go along with what Bishop ministered this morning. God wants to clean his house. You know, come on, don't be ashamed. The Holy Ghost said they're going to be embarrassed to get up there. But God told me if you'll get up there, God is going to work a deliberate miracle in your life. Hallelujah. So it's whatever you want. If you want to hang on to, amen, a root of bitterness, amen, you try to keep it down, push it down, but it's still there. And the Holy Ghost said if you'll come, he'll give you a miracle tonight. Hallelujah. He said, well, I don't want to confess that. I just confess to you. I'm going to tell you another little story. The Holy Ghost said, i got to say that, and then I'm going to have you minister that song. Brother came to the Lord in the church I was going to. I was about 18. His wife had left him, took their little girl. He came to the church, gave his heart to Jesus, being faithful. Work long story short, I needed a find a roommate, a place to live, and said to him, I said, brother, I said, can we share an apartment? Split the cost. And so we went in, shared the apartment, split the cost, going to church, hallelujah, praising the Lord. And then all of a sudden, amen, he had a problem with custody. He got hurt. He got depressed. And then one day I come home from church, and here was the incense going, trying to cover up the marijuana. Then I was looking, and here was all, amen, the, 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 the adult magazines, and the cigarette ashtrays, and the liquor bottles, and the beer cans. And I went along for about two weeks. Then I got my righteous indignation. And I said, who does he think he is? I'm paying half the rent here. I don't have to put up with his mess. Come on. That's what you're some of y'all doing. I don't have to put up with this mess. So he was at work, and I went in and got all the ashtrays and the incense and the beer cans and the, the whiskey bottles and the wine bottles and all the pornography. I took clean that apartment, took it all and threw it, amen, in the trash. He come home from work. He looked around. The place was clean. He walked over to me and said, You had no right to throw my things away. And I said, I had every right. We're supposed to be Christians. I can't have to run around here. You're not acting right. I don't have to allow this stuff in my house. He didn't speak to me for about two weeks. We just passed. I was in church. Here we go again, I'm trying to tell you. I was sitting in church and boy, I was talking in tongues. I was dancing. I used to dance fast when I was young. I mean, you didn't have a church or probably that I wouldn't dance like these young brothers here. Hallelujah. Shout and praise of God going on. Amen. Then I was over there, oh Jesus, hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost spoke, Pastor Walter. And he said, Do you love your brother Chuck? That was my roommate. Do you love your brother Chuck? And I thought, Well, Lord. Yes, There's one more here. Hallelujah. It's been eating at you a long time. You haven't been able to let go. But if you'll obey the Holy Ghost, he's working on you. Thank You're going to get a total victory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. And so, this brother said, no, I, I, I mean, the Holy Ghost would talk to me and said, they you love your brother? Hallelujah. They get ready. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And
I'll never forget it. When the Lord said that you love your brother. I said, Lord, he's messed up. He's a mess. I don't need to pray for him. He ain't going to change. He's doing what he wants to do. See that old self-righteous self. Come on, there's some of you family members here. You've had that attitude. The Holy Ghost is rebuking you right now. So, go home. I done had my peace with the Lord. I thought, you know, yeah, yeah, I love it, but it ain't going to do no good to pray for him or, or if I just get down on him. He all messed up. I'm laying in bed. Holy Ghost wakes me up about 2 a.m. And he said, wash your brother's feet and ask his forgiveness. Now wait a minute. He's the one that's messing up. I gotta ask him to forgive me. Come on. I know the Holy Ghost is getting some people here. And I thought, this is my thought. Ain't gonna do no good. Now God just talked to me. I said the Lord just talked to me. It ain't gonna do no good. But I feared the Lord. That's what some of y'all like in. Now I'm speaking about the Holy Ghost. You think I'm just talking? You're gonna be accountable for what you heard tonight. Don't fear the Lord. I said, well, I'm gonna obey with an attitude. Did you know you can obey God with an attitude, but obey Him? Obey the Lord, even if you've got a bad attitude, do what thus saith the Lord. Some of you Holy Ghost people know what I'm talking about. I said, all right. I went in the kitchen, rushed around, got the pan, got water put in, the towel went over to his room by his bed. And real quiet. awake and all the time I'm hoping he didn't hear me I was talk about an attitude right and to my disappointment he said yes <laughs> It's like an eternity. He said, yes. So he sat on the side of his bed. Amen. I washed those feet. Then he said, put the pan and put back the kid here. And I went back. I thought to myself, my thought was, well, at least I obeyed the Lord. Now what his problem is, still his problem, but at least I obeyed the Lord. So, that ain't getting through to somebody, but hallelujah. So I laid back in bed, my room, went past to sleep. Then I heard. And I felt. Bob. Well, can I wash your feet? Amen. Hallelujah. And when, when he said that, and I put my own dirty, stinky feet down, <laughs> y'all still love me, don't you? I did wash them. <laughs> and he washed my feet. And you know what happened? The Holy Ghost came in that room. And we have been brothers ever since. I'm telling you, the Spirit of the Lord came in there. Hallelujah. God healed his heart, healed my heart. And God delivered me from self-righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to do what the Lord says do. And glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you. Amen. Be patient. 
But I want you to stretch your hand toward these. God's going to do this great miracle. And I've asked Pastor Walter to minister a song while I begin to wash their feet. Hallelujah.
Lord's direction. The one that you've been having trouble with and you just want to quit and give up on them, Holy Ghost saying, go and wash their feet. Because see, that's a lack of His love. We need forgiveness. But when you'll obey, you don't want to do it, I know, but you do it. God's love is going to increase in your life. Hallelujah. You know, and then you talk about somebody. God's love will increase in your life. Lift your hands, say thank you, Jesus. God didn't leave us alone, Lord. Come on. You didn't leave us alone. But you sent your love. Help us not love as the world loves. But help us love by the Holy Ghost. The fruit of His Spirit. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. I've asked a, a, a brother, Pastor Sterling, if you'll come. Hallelujah. Now there's some of you, amen, God ministered to many this morning with offense, but God wants to minister to you about an increase of His love. Hallelujah. Now I've asked Pastor Sterling, a couple other preachers here, and they're going to help me. Uh, my mom, Ellie, come on up here. Hallelujah. And I want you to come up tonight. God showed me as you stand in here. God's going to increase the love of God in your life. This church is going to turn around to the place when people walk through the door. They know it for the shout. They know it for faith. But they're going to know it for the love of God. Hallelujah. They pass it. Oh, yes. So come on. Come on if you want a little bit more. I want some more. Y'all don't come. I'll come. I want more.
things from this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. The walls are coming down because we refuse to get stuck in between them. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Because I was wondering when can I incorporate feet washing? And I was just talking about it. I was telling somebody about it just the other week that I wanted to get back to it and God opened the door. That's why I was the first one up that said, let me do it. Amen. So I just thank God for your word. God, be delivering on the head.
listen. But see, now what we needed to do, now that it has come out, now we need the Holy Spirit to come in. So we pray now that the Holy Ghost will indwell her and fill her, and she will be filled with the Holy Ghost. So those other spirits cannot come in. Amen. So stretch your hands towards the Oh, my God. 
don't miss a service. You don't know when the Holy Ghost is going to break out. We do break out in uh, 6.45, just before Bible study on Thursday. We might just break out in Sunday school. Right, Brother Clark is getting ready to teach. The Holy Ghost might just break out, so don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. And then we're going to give it over to Elder Fritch to dismiss us. But haven't we enjoyed this? Yes, yes. Woo! I'm going to say no more because I know some of you got it. I'm not going to let the demon of the clock stop me. But when y'all go home, I'm going to give the Lord some praise up in here. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. Amen. You know what? We have to have the finish of what Pastor Bob had started out here because you're wondering about that mean dad that he had while well, I was married to him. Amen. See, uh, but I want you to know the good news. He saved. He was saved before he was killed. Amen. 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 One word that I must tell all of you. Yes, there's evil in the world and you may be married to someone that's full of it. But love will overcome. When the Lord was going to take the life of this husband of mine and Bob's dad, he was dying, God took my spirit there, the angel of death came to get him, and I said, Jesus, no. He can't have him. You have not answered our prayer. We have prayed for his soul. You cannot take him to hell. We pray for his soul. Amen. And Jesus was standing there. And I just seen his eyes look at me straight. He said, I'll wink in his heart seven times and let him live three more years. Oh, come on, my son, and he did it. God is faithful. We love that old cruel man. Yes, we did. Not his wealth, not his abilities. He was a rodeo champion. Yes, we did not love that, but we loved him. Yes. We did not give up on him. Don't give up on your mean, ugly, nasty, cruel family. God will save them. That's the word. That's the word. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm Chris, would you come dismiss us? Amen. Because if you don't dismiss us, we might just be calling. Right? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray this missile, but you don't have to leave. Amen. Hallelujah. You can keep on praising God if you so desire. Amen. 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 But with uplifted hands, dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to take us down from this place, but not from your presence. Keep us under the shadow of your almighty power. Keep us protected, each and every one of our family members, God, and bring us back at another point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Woo!